Welcome back to theCUBE here in the Palo Alto studio. I'm John Furrier, host with Dave Vellante, my co-host. This is the Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leaders Program, part of theCUBE and the NYSE Wired community. Rodrigo Lang is here, the founder and CEO of Seven Nova. Great to have you on, Rodrigo. Great to see you. Yeah, thanks for having hey, me. Good Rodrigo. to see you again. Palo Alto office, my hometown. Good to see it all the time. Yeah, no, you guys, it's- You guys uh, are down Hamilton, right? Or is well, it university? We're actually down on uh, uh, Embarcadero on 101. Okay, yep. that's right. We're close. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're a stone's throw from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're, All right, we're so let's close. get into it. What are you guys doing? Obviously, the infrastructure is hot. Semis are hot. Again, systems revolution's happening. Yep. We just we're talking about this idea of a full system stack, clustered systems, yep. servers are now looking like clusters of clusters, interconnects. Yeah. All kinds of new architecturals are happening and building this next supercomputers. Yeah. What are you guys doing in, in the scheme of things? Well, on one end, we build chips to compete with NVIDIA. I mean, yeah, we build our own substrates that uh, run the largest models and the most complex models, and we run them faster than anybody else. And on the other bookend is we build a full stack that allows you to actually deploy these models without having to learn CUDA, without, without having to do all the low-level manual work. You can just download these models and then run them and run them really fast. On the substrate side, one of the innovations we've been seeing is that's been a big part of blending stuff in there. What's, what's your thoughts there? How is that going? Because everything's getting tied in. Interconnects, yeah. um, you, it was a big part of it. Now high bandwidth memory, yeah. it's just the chips. Yeah. It's the whole package. Yeah. How do you guys play into that? Are you going to provide the substrate and the chips? Yeah, yeah. we build uh, everything from the architecture all the way down to the substrates and we use all of those technologies. Um, it's a data flow chip, and so what you know about uh, machine learning is data flow is yeah. ultimately the new new way of computing these things, and so we're natively data flow, and then we use all of the techniques that, you know, where we have multiple chips on the same package, and we use the packages at the lowest power, and then apply them as a cluster so we can build these complex systems. Yeah. So and, this and is- TSMC is manufacturing for you, right? On, yeah, on, on the, 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 the diagram. It's an ARM-based architecture, correct? No, 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 this is data flow, and so we don't it's have it. an ISA architecture, and so we're able to take this hardware, compile these models from Hugging Face directly on the hardware, and then just use these x86 hosts just to transfer the data ah, over yeah, to the okay, accelerator. Yeah, right, and so it. eliminates the need to have an on-chip ISA. Uh, and the impact of the data is what? Scale, performance, so for machine learning and AI, what, what's the optimization? What's the, what are you guys optimizing for? 10x the performance and one-tenth the power. That's what we do. And so people want to go to production, you want to run a Llama 400B model, which we just announced. We're able to do that 115 tokens per second, which is 10 times faster than anybody else out there. And we run it at less than 19 kilowatts. Token economics, is, Dave and I were joking because that's a crypto term during the um, craze days, but tokens are now part of the currency and benchmarks. Yeah. So how do you talk to customers when they say, okay, what is the kind of performance? Because you can contextually say, in this use case, you know, this is the kind of performance you see. Um, a lot of people are kind of using the token benchmarking, but it's not that easy. You can throw more power at it and have yeah. a lot of performance, lower power. So power is important in benchmarks. Yeah. Can you share just to clear the air? And because a lot of fine print in some of these benchmarks, oh yeah, we got more performance, more tokens per second. Yeah. Uh, but, there are three variables that you, you care about when it comes to tokens per second. One is just raw speed, right? You're paying the cloud providers or some provider a monthly fee. You just want to see how many tokens can you produce in a single month. The average NVIDIA you know, runs LAM at 100 tokens per second. We do 1,000 tokens per second. We're just generating more revenue. Yeah. That's one. Two, you have model variety, which means that everybody's fine tuning their models. And so for every model that you run, you need a separate rack. We can run multi-tenant models all the models in a single rack, and so that, again, is economics. And the third one is, today, as you know, with NVIDIA racks, there are 120 kilowatts per rack, we're running 19 kilowatts, I that's mean, power. That's NVIDIA it. has a, a power problem. Yeah. You can buy all the GPs you want, but you can't run them. But so the power. advantage is you can optimize as well for specific use cases, right? And, and, and the, the capabilities that you have, you say you basically don't need CUDA, but you have CUDA-like capabilities that are sort of low code, no code. Yeah. So what are those use cases that you're finding? Well, so what we're finding is LLMs today are fantastic. What is the number one issue people have? They have all this data, they don't know what it says. All the enterprises have all this data, they don't know what it says. But in order for you to discover that, you have to disclose that data to the cloud. Nobody wants to do that. No one's doing well, that. Well, Salmonova, because we're so efficient, we're able to run these models locally, we can bring the AI to you. We can bring a model that's a GPT-4-like model, like a Llama 400B that just got released by Meta. We can bring that to your environment. We can read all your private data, train it privately for you, and you can deploy it privately. And so the value proposition we're providing is that we can discover all the knowledge you already have 
and you just chat to it the way you chat to with ChatGPT, right? And so that is one use case that is just undeniable that people want to keep privacy ownership of the model. They want so to be able to. So it sounds like you're control. a perfect purpose built for enterprise AI, Absolutely. in the in the and sense of what's going on in the data center. The private AI. Can we bring up the the power law again? The 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 yeah. whole notion here is the the vertical axis is model size and the horizontal axis is domain specificity. Mm -hmm. And that red torso getting pulled up Belly to the fat. right is, is the, from open source and third party right. LLMs. So you're saying you're playing in that long tail in the specific industries and basically bringing up, up, up the private, uh, the capability to take your data, keep it private and actually interrogate that data, get value out of that data. Right, exactly. Actually, we're saying that this is this is a compromised choice. Do I want accuracy from the large models or do I want privacy? You're saying you, right? can, you can blow away and that. And what we're saying is don't make the choice uncompromised. Let me bring a 400 billion model yeah. to your data center, fine tune it on your data center, deploy your data center with all your private data. Don't ever just. So that would be a lump. Uh, no, make, no, it moves, right, moves, yeah, moves the curve up. No, but I'm saying on that, on that horizontal axis, you would actually have Big, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. The yeah. whole curve moves yeah. up and to the right because what you're doing. functional. Yeah, we can bring large, yeah, large yeah, models yeah. that have all the benefits. It's still a tail, but it's, it's got more. Well, but you would more. draw Samanova up versus some yeah, of the we, small uh, language models. It would be up and the right because but, yeah, the, the bigger the model. Yeah, bring it back yeah. up if you would, guys. Now, hold on, let me explain. Let me stand with you this right and then you can correct me. So see how the, it comes, no neck and no torso. That's today. It like, looks like the record industry in 2000. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then the fat and belly gets up there because of the demand it's moves up the curve, but all those specialized models that don't have that size can grow because they're bringing with their chip efficiency down into the tail, so the tail goes up. That's right, that's exactly right, that's exactly right. What do people in the enterprise want? They want accuracy. Yeah. These hallucinations are killing us, right? And so you want accuracy, and the way to do it is two ways. One, it's larger models. Two, it's private data. Yeah. Right, those are the two things, well, so to, that's what we're solving for. The, the alternative to, of your At solution, the alternative of your solution is to call an API and send data to them and get it back, which but no one wants to do. That's right, because that's then the you have to disclose your data and then the, all that's in the public and you don't know exactly where the data went because in trained into models you can, don't control. Enterprises don't want that. You think about regulated mm -hmm. environments like banks and you know, they just don't want to do that. Okay, so I have a couple questions. So um, obviously Nvidia touts parallel processing power, specialized hardware, and high performance interconnects. Yeah. You match up on all those with them. Yeah, I mean, but, well the results, the results show tell, tell the tale now. One of the things is we're able to actually take models and run it multi-tenant, right? Why is it that we NVIDIA is so reliant on these large interconnects? Is because every chip is actually a disparate model. And so what we're able to do is because of our memory, we can collapse that whole footprint into a far, far fewer number of chips, which then puts yeah. less pressure on the interconnect. Robert, I want to ask you a question because I love, the, love what you're doing. It's very disruptive in a positive way. It's enabling, actually. Yeah. It's a dis disruptive enabler, which is always a great thing because you know, something gets disrupted yeah. and you're enabling. Yeah. It's a win-win for somebody, yeah. not the other guy. Um, when you look at the, the early adopters, because you're going on the classic, you got the early adopters and the fast followers will yeah. come on board. Can you share some of the results you guys have seen on the early adopters and any kind of indicators on how those fast followers are going to go adopt to your model? Yeah, I mean, like we said, People today are going to production, and production means that you have many, many models, many, many users, and you're running out of space, out of power, and out of budget, frankly, mm -hmm. right? And so those are the, the pain points that people have. And so with Samanova, when we've gone into the U.S. government, which has been we're yeah, the most massive deployed, customer. massive, and all private data, yeah. with a lot of users, with a lot of different model variety, we're able to go in and serve those with a much, much smaller footprint because we're native multi-tenant yeah. and we can actually host hundreds of models on a single rack and then deploy them at a thousand tokens per second online. I mean, energy efficiency just creates massive appetite for AI workloads because of, right. the, of the, the multi multi capabilities. Talk about the, um, the impact you're seeing from a business standpoint right now. Some of your customers, uh, we're seeing uh, results um, and you know, even um, ICE, which is the parent company for NYSC, yeah. had results in their energy today. Um, Brian was talking about that because of AI. So you're right. starting to see in these verticals, AI yeah. is actually creating more power in terms of budget, approval, spend, yeah. consumption. Yeah. Can you point to any examples in the market where you're starting to see some results at the end user customer where it's like, okay, that made it, that was a game, that was a needle mover. Yeah, I mean, you look at kind of some of these service providers that are doing tokens per second, the token factories, yeah. as people call it, right? I mean, it's a simple math. 
It's how many tokens can you produce in a given amount of time at what power? And like I said, we're doing 1,000 tokens per second when everybody's doing 100 tokens per second. They're doing 120 kilowatts. We're doing at 19 kilowatts. So are you, That's the simple math. Are, are you pretty much whale hunting or, or, or smaller companies? for? Companies? We're global 2,000. We're global yeah. 2,000, so we look but, for, uh, you know. Okay, so not giant global 2,000 necessarily. But. Not necessarily global 2,000, but we want people at scale. We want people who are on the more kind of mid to advanced uh, uh, part of the journey. If we're really, really early, it's probably too early for us. You can probably get some instances on the cloud and get your, 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 your feet wet. Yeah, okay. exactly. But as you've now gone into, okay, I want to do some things privately. All right. Okay, then we're, we're great. Rodrigo, right, now that we know that you live right around the corner from us, we're going to either go to your place and get you on camera, <laughs> or you're going to be back in the studio here. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Sounds and love great. what you guys do. Awesome story. Love the vision, love the execution, great. and again, Great product at the right time, too. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having us. Thanks, thanks for, for coming on. Us. Okay, this is theCUBE here at Palo, our Palo Alto studio for the Silicon Valley AI leaders, theCUBE and NYSE Wired. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back to end the day out here in Palo Alto. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs>